Hello and welcome to another Spass Kangaroo tutorial. Today we're going to be finishing off our game for the game development uh, beginner series. And uh, we're going to be doing a couple things today. We're going to be adding a background image, uh, some background music, and particle systems. So uh, let's get started. So you can see right here I have created a background image. Um, it has a frog in it because details are great. Um, and we're just going to load it with love.graphics.newImage in a background image variable in our love.load function. Uh, and then we're going to draw it in the love.draw function with love.graphics.draw background image. We're putting this at the beginning of the function so that it is the first thing that's drawn. If you put it at the end, um, it won't be the, the, it'll be the last thing that's drawn. So make sure to put it at the very beginning. Now we're just going to create more enemies. Uh, we're going to spawn more at the beginning because right now it's just spawning uh, two and I want it to spawn more. So I'm just going to write a for loop at the top uh, using Lua's for loop syntax. The first argument is the iterator and the second argument is the limit for the iterator. So it'll start at zero and go up to ten and spawn ten enemies for us. Now we're going to add the logic for the game over screen. So in the love.load function, we're just going to create a game over boolean and set it to false. And in our update function, when we update our enemies, we're going to check that their y location is past the height of the window divided by 4 because we're scaling by 4. Remember our factor, uh, we scaled by 4. And if it is less than four if any of them have reached the bottom of the screen that means uh, they've reached the planet surface and game over is true uh, so set game over to true inside that ifs block and um, we're just going to add um, some functionality to our draw function to just print game over um, a blank print game over screen if the game over boolean is true. And if it is, we will love.graphics.print, game over, um, and if you don't pass it an xy coordinate, it'll just put it at 0, 0, which is fine. Um, now we're returning here so that it doesn't draw anything afterwards. It'll break right out of the love.draw function. It won't draw anything else. While playing this game right here, I realized that it was that the enemies were falling at an impossible speed. So I decided to change their speed to something more playable, like 0.4. However, when I ran it, they fell at the same pace. And I tried switching this around a few times, and they still fell at the same pace no matter what I set it to, even at 0.01, which really should have had a noticeable effect. And uh, I, w I was trying to figure out why when I realized that I simply wasn't multiplying the speed into the update function. I had forgotten to do that, so um, you have to add, you have to multiply by e dot speed in your enemy update. And now, when the enemies fall, they fall at a rate that is possible for uh, me to shoot them all at. You could probably set it to something faster to make the game more challenging, but I decided just to leave it simple so I could test the game over and game win states. The rules for my game are that if the player manages to shoot all the enemies in the game, uh, they've won. So I just check the length of the enemies table and see if it's zero. And if it is, I'll assume they've won the game. Uh, the pound symbol in the if statement is, is an operation in Lua to check the length of the table. So that's why I'm using it there. I'm just checking that the length of the table is zero. And in our draw function, um, we're going to add an else if statement in the game over if block. Um, so if it's, ga if it's game over, then print game over, else if game win. So if it's game win, then we'll just print you won. And I'm not going to return in this one so that you can just shoot victoriously off into space. Um, and so it's not a blank screen. If you want to be blank screen, you can do that too. And now, um, if we manage to shoot all the aliens floating down from space, uh, nothing pops up. 
and this is another uh, what happened moment and I realize it's because I'm drawing the background image over top of the text so you have to put it behind uh, you have to put the text in front of it so you have to put the background behind the text and now um, it will print you one in front of uh, our game so let's get the music now um, I use free music archive because it has royalty free music you can search by royalty free music uh, and you're able to just stream it there uh, so it's very convenient it's where I get uh, all my music for my videos and games so um, I just downloaded one of the first ones I found that was allows for commercial use and is electronic and kind of fits the mood and I'm just gonna at load I'm gonna create a new source load the music file and play it like so <laughs> And with that goofiness out of the way, um, let's figure out how to actually make this music loop. I just created a variable and I used love's set looping function, um, set it to true, and then just played the music. And now, when you play the game, it will loop the music. And to finish this all off, we're going to create a particle system that spawns when enemies die. I have a particle systems variable. Uh, because I want to handle all of them in one place instead of spawning a bunch of them and then not knowing where they are so I can't clean up after they're finished generating particles. And um, the first thing you have to do to create a particle system is have an image. Uh, so I just created an image that's uh, pretty much just a pixel block. Then uh, assign a new particle system to a vari variable. The second argument after the image is maximum number of particles in the scene and then just set all of these uh, attributes after the particle lifetime is fairly self-explanatory it's just how long the particle is uh, is in the game um, the emission rate is how fast it creates them the size variance is the size variance linear, linear acceleration is the wobbliness and colors are the colors uh, then just insert that particle system into the particle system list in our collision function, you can um, have it spawn a particle system, call that spawn function. So now we're going to create the draw function that will draw all the particle systems that are spawned. So it just goes through every element in the particle system list and draws it. And then, at this moment, I realized I had forgotten to assign the x and y for the spawn to a, vari to a variable, so ps is actually going to be a table. And it will have a ps.ps .ps is the particle system, the reference to the particle system, and ps.x and ps.y are the x and y location. And in our update function, you have to update particle systems. Um, so we have to write a particle systems update function to update all the particles in the scene. And uh, you just have to say v.ps colon update. You can write some sort of uh, cleanup function to delete particle systems after a certain amount of time or after the game finishes uh, if you load level or reset everything. Um, but I'm not going to for the sake of shortness, so you can do that. I, when I ran it, I hit an error because you're supposed to pass the alpha for the co set colors in the particle system. Um, and once you do, it should look something like this. So. Uh, this is it. This is the final product of uh, the last couple videos. Uh, make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. Uh, and let me know if uh, you want to see more videos like this. plan on making a Unity 3D uh, series at some point. As well as um, I am currently working on a premium 2D platformer uh, series. So 
it'll take all these concepts but we'll make a full-fledged game more of a full-fledged game uh, much more polished than what we've done here uh, this is just a very simple thing to get you started the beginner beginner project um, so once you've written a few of these uh, you may want to check out their premium series because that will definitely be covering some more advanced 2d love 2d uh, game concepts uh, and then the unity one I plan on making a free one probably will uh, be like beginner intermediate level um, and that one, I haven't completely flushed that idea out, but let me know if you'd be interested in that and what you'd want to see in that series in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this series. Uh, subscribe for more game dev and arch tutorials. And we'll see you all later.